morning, friends. Let's talk about how my day starts in Mexico. First thing I do, open up the window and the doors and get some coffee. I like coffee, but I'm not a gourmet. I make it the night before. Warm it up in the microwave in the morning. I'll be sitting down here and watching the news. Gonna open up the rest of the house so we can hear the birds. trouble with my shoulder. I think uh, brushing my hair in the morning is one of my exercises. What happened with my shoulder is I slipped and fell when it snowed on March 5th up in Sonoida, Arizona. And I fell down and hurt my shoulder. And uh, for about a month, I couldn't raise my arm like this to comb my hair. So, you just saw me brushing my teeth with water out of the sink. We use bottled water for drinking and cooking, but after 20 years in Mexico, the flora and fauna in our gut's probably okay for washing our teeth, brushing our teeth with water out of the city water system. That's what we do, and we don't get sick, so. That's what we do. Uh, I keep my toothbrush and my toothpaste up here because if I'm gonna have a shower in the morning, I brush my teeth in the shower. TMI, too much information? <laughs> Good morning. So my morning ritual is to sit here and watch the news on my iPad. I watch the NBC Evening News with Lester Holt. And uh, of course I'm getting it uh, 12 hours after it was broadcast, but doing that daily, I keep up on what's going on in the world with uh, uh, a minimum of political bullshit in the middle of it. Um, unlike a couple of other channels like Fox and CNN. And uh, if you regularly watch those, I'm sure you're probably opinionated beyond your education. But uh, that's a subject for another day and not on this channel. <laughs> uh, blah, blah. I may have to edit that out. I'm going to watch the news. Good morning.
Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Well, that was some news. It's June 10th, Saturday, June 10th, 2023. First time it ever happened in the history of the United States, an ex-president was indicted on federal charges. But hey, innocent until proven guilty, right? Well, that's not the way it is in Mexico. In Mexico, uh, the federal law in Mexico is based upon the Napoleonic uh, Code of Law, which means that you are charged with a crime. You are guilty until you prove your innocence. And uh, that's way different. So if you're accused of a crime, essentially you're on probation um, until your trial comes up. I had a uh, friend who got into the middle of that situation. Maybe I'll tell you the story about it. Her name was Sandy, and Sandy, uh, this happens. Telephone. It was my neighbor, Carol, wanting to know if I wanted to go for a walk this morning, which I do. So I'm going to make this story short, and then um, I'll uh, get this up to you. Her name was Sandy, and she had a house here in Ajijic, Mexico, and she hired a person to come and polish her marble floors with a floor polisher, which he did, and he did a fairly good job and left the floor polisher outside her front door on the sidewalk and went up the block to talk to a friend of his. And she, in looking around the house, decided that uh, it was done very, very well, but there was one corner that she'd like him to spend just a little bit more time on. So she w went to look for him and couldn't find him. And his floor polisher was sitting outside her front door on the public sidewalk. And his pickup was sitting right there. And she pulled the floor polisher back into his house, thinking that he would come and knock on the door, and then that would give her an opportunity to talk to him, and she she wouldn't miss him. Well, he came back, got in his truck, and drove away, and reported that his floor polisher had been stolen. Now, uh, several months went by, and she's got a floor polisher sitting there, and she decided to just get rid of it, so... She did, she gave it to somebody. And um, a few months after that, now we've passed about six, seven months here, uh, the police knocked on her door. And in Mexico, the police can't come into your house, but what they'll do is they'll knock on your door, whether it's your outside wall to your property or whatever, and pretend to shake hands and then drag you out into a public place, at which time they can arrest you. So that's what happened. Uh, they shook hands with her and uh, pulled her out onto the public sidewalk and arrested her for having stolen his floor polisher. So she is now in jail for the weekend. And uh, jail in Chapala, Mexico, uh, they don't feed you. You have to have friends come and give you food. Um, anyway, that was the weekend she got out. Now, because it's the Napoleonic Code of Law, she's guilty until she proves her innocence. And that means that she has to report to the court every Monday morning because she's on probation until her trial comes up. Um, this goes on for months and months and months. And uh, she's not able to get the floor polisher back immediately but uh, eventually she does locate it, but the guy refuses to take it, um, just wants the court to proceed. And every Monday morning, she's got to go and report to the court. In the meantime, she has decided, now we're into this about a year. In the telling of this story, I forgot to mention that it was many years ago, and that becomes important towards the end of this video. She has decided that she's wanting to sell her house and she's already purchased a smaller house down on the coast about 200 kilometers away in Manzanillo. And um, 
uh, she can't move to her new house because every Monday morning she's got to report to the court because she's on probation until her trial starts. Uh, I'm going to make the rest of this story uh, shorter. Eventually, by some advice from a friend who has been around Mexico a long time, uh, she offers to pay the judge um, to dismiss the case, which she does. And for several thousands of U.S. dollars, she is um, free to move to the coast, which she did. Uh, Mexico, the Napoleonic Code of Law, you are guilty as charged until you prove your innocence. Very different from the United States of America. So my advice is don't get in trouble in Mexico. So we're down here by the lake and there's been some local efforts to clean it up. A lot less trash. It's uh, beautiful. A couple of dogs are gonna say hi to each other. Yeah, a lot of tail wagging going on there. Yep. And a little butt smelling. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. We're good. We're good. We're good. Bruno. That's okay. Be good. Well, Carol and I went for our walk and I decided before I posted this that I would come back and make sure that I was giving you accurate information about guilty until proven innocent instead of misinformation. Um, there's a lot of mainstream media that's in charge of misinformation. I'll leave them to that, but I wanted to be accurate today. So I looked it up, and um, this is from the American consulate in Tijuana, Mexico. And this was published in 2017. Mexico's civil law system is derived primarily from Roman law and the Napoleonic Code, for an accused person, one of the most critical differences is that under Mexican criminal law, the accused is essentially considered guilty until proven innocent. So, read that, seems to confirm what I said. But let's dig into it a little farther. I went all the way back to how did this all get started, and I got to the Declaration of Rights, Declaration of the Rights of Man, in France, in Article 9 of that, published in 1789. And what it says is that any man being presumed innocent until he has been declared guilty. So it seems to contradict it. And I ran into this when somebody was saying, no, that's not true anymore. You presumed innocent. So I went and looked a little farther. And here's what I found. This is um, Article 9 of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen of 1789. The Code of Criminal Procedure states that it is pre in its preliminary article that any person suspected or prosecuted is innocent until proven guilty. Now, that's what I read. But now I'm going to go read the actual Article 9 that it references this is Article 9 of the Rights of Man in France. Any man being presumed innocent until he is declared culpable if it is judged indispensable to arrest him. Article 9. So the first time I read that, it says, yeah, any man is presumed innocent. Well, let's read it a little more carefully. Any man presumed, word for word, English translation, of course, because it's in French, but... I don't read French. Any man being presumed innocent until he is declared culpable if it is judged indispensable to arrest him. And what does that say? It says you're innocent until you're arrested, not innocent until you're proven guilty, innocent until you're arrested. And then after you're arrested, you're guilty until you prove your innocence. So we can't use that excuse to show that um, Mexico is different. But I think Mexico is different. 
This is the latest information that I could find. Mexico has acceded to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the ICCPR, and it did this in 1981. The 2008 Mexican reforms to the criminal code included some of the ICCPR provisions, such as a specific ban on the use of torture, the innocence, the presumption of innocence, the protections to reinforce due process, and the requirement that all defendants have professional legal representation. And that representation includes a number of due process rights. And again, one of those rights was the presumption of innocence. Now, in reading farther, I found out that that reform in the Mexican Criminal Code of 2008 was officially adopted federally all across the country in 2016. So since 2016, you are no longer guilty until proven innocent in Mexico. You, are, you enjoy the presumption of innocence until proven guilty, just like everywhere else, or not everywhere else, but in the United States. There you have it. I still have some advice, and it's the same. <laughs> Don't get in trouble in Mexico. <laughs> hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.